Okay, let's get started. Okay, um, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the fourth background lecture in the modern SSD course. So yeah, it's, it's been so long after our, uh, since our last lecture. So before we dive into today's topics, uh, let's uh, recap what we have discussed so far in this course. So we first learned the SSD basics, including SSD organization and NAND flash organization and operations. Then we discussed the several advanced and end flash comments uh, that aim to improve SS performance, right? And last meeting, we also reviewed address, the address translation and garbage collection, which is one of the core functionalities of an FTL. Today, we are going to discuss something that I believe should be considered in practical SS design, but uh, <coughs> is often overlooked. Sorry about that. <coughs> overlooked in the literature. So despite their high impact on SS performance and also lifetime, uh, even NQSIM, even in, in the NQSIM at uh, the state of the art SS simulator, I would say uh, it does not uh, properly support these features. So I believe this should be properly implemented as a baseline in any SS simulation and can also give us some good food for thoughts for future research. Okay, let's dive into the first topic, uh, the fine-grained mapping. And I'm going to first provide a brief background necessary to under, understand this topic. And as we all know, a page is the minimum IO unit of NAND flash memory. And in early generations of NAND flash memory, the page size was 256 bytes, but manufacturers actually have continuously increased the page size uh, to six kilobytes over decades at this moment. Uh, except in some latency optimized NAND flash memory, like the ZNAND from Samsung. And there can be many reasons, many possible reasons for uh, increasing the page size. For example, a large page size allows us uh, to reduce the size of peripheral circuit inside the NAND flash die, uh, meaning that the peripheral circuit, uh, which is necessary for specifying a page or block to operate. And also a large page uh, provides high operation bandwidth uh, since the latency increase uh, sublinearly uh, with the page size, meaning the cells operating at the same time. And meanwhile, the minimum IO unit of a file system, usually called a logical block or sector, has also increased from uh, 5 to 12 bytes to 4 kilobytes in order to more efficiently work with the NAND flash based SSDs. However, as you can see, the increase in the logical block size in the file system is a reliability small uh, compared to that in page size in NAND flash memory. And it is somewhat difficult to, to actually increase the block size, logical block size further, because operating system level IO handling is very closely related to uh, memory management, um, closely related to the memory management that is commonly based on a four kilobyte memory page size. So increasing the memory page size would introduce unnecessary fetch or evictions at the page cache, especially when workloads randomly access uh, the stored data. And also uh, it will, uh, increasing the block size also increases the latency for fetching and eviction, right? To move larger data. So in modern NAND flash based storage systems, uh, there is quite a large IO, mis I IO size mismatch between the operating system and underlying NAND flash chips, which can significantly affect the performance and lifetime of the storage systems. Okay, let's dive into the problems that this IO mismatch introduces, uh, being combined with the years before write property of NAND flash memory that we already discussed. So suppose a host IO request uh, which is to write a four kilobyte data A to logical block address four. 
uh, where the logical block size is four kilobytes here, and the, while, while the page size is 16 kilobytes. And as we discussed in previous meetings, uh, an FTL uh, needs to maintain logical to physical mappings to service the future read requests on pages that are written in an auto place manner, right? So the logical uh, page address is not necessarily uh, the same as the physical page address. So the FDA needs to maintain this logical to physical mappings to service the reader requests. And let's also assume that the FTL employs the page level mapping where the mapping granularity is the same as the page size. And many studies actually assume the page level mapping like this. And the current version of NQSIM also supports this uh, as a baseline mapping scheme. Okay, and since the logical block order as a specifies a four kilobyte uh, block, a uh, target block, the FTL also uses uh, two least significant bits or LSB as the four kilobyte data offset and specifies a target uh, logical address using the remaining most significant bits, uh, which translates the logical block address four to logical page address one. Make sense? Hope it, this makes, hope it makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then the FTL writes the target data A using a free page uh, because we, uh, the common SS, they always perform out of place updates. Okay, and updates uh, the corresponding logical to physical mapping to service the future reader to the data, right? And let's consider a new IO request to write the two consecutive four kilobyte data blocks, B and C, with a starting logical block address one, okay? And the starting logical block address would be translated uh, in the same way as we pre uh, just reviewed. Uh, so it translates uh, the, the logical block uh, address one to logical page address zero with the four kilobyte data offset of one, right? And in this case, the FTL writes the data blocks using a new physical page, page one in this example, uh, and updates uh, the corresponding logical to physical mappings, right? Note that data blocks B and C here are written in the middle of a physical page one based on the requested four kilobyte uh, data offset, which is one, not zero. Right. And this is necessary to service a future reader request to store data. And since the FTL maintains only the indices of a 16 kilobyte page, uh, so the lo location of a stored data must be specified by its a four kilobyte offset of the request to the logical block address. It means that uh, the four kilobyte offset of the logical block address should be consistent also in the corresponding physical page. And also, even though there is a free uh, there is a free space in physical page zero, the F FTL needs to allocate a new free page because that free space uh, in logical uh, physical page zero here is already mapped to other logical blocks, uh, meaning logical blocks uh, five to seven, which have not uh, yet been written. Now let's consider one more request that writes a four kilobyte data block D to logical block address seven, that would be translated to logical page address one also, right? And the FTL has already allocated uh, physical page zero to logical page one, and the space for uh, the offset three is unused, right? So can we use this unused space for data D then? The answer is not likely because in fact, uh, the cells in the unused space have been programmed already due to data randomizations. So to be specific, even though the FTL needed to write uh, only part of page zero, meaning uh, where the block A is currently stored, uh, it must have issued a page program command anti for an entire page by sending some dummy data for remaining page, unless there was a specialized operation, something like a sub page program command. Because this is because, yeah, the page is a minimum IO unit of an end of page memory, right? And even if the FTL set the dummy data to all zeros, meaning so FTL set the data to program uh, for this, uh, um, I don't know, uh, free space uh, to be all zero, right? 
uh, all, all zero. Uh, but, uh, and, and the, typically as we discussed, the one is corresponds, uh, corresponding of let's say the series state. Uh, so hopefully, so the user can expect uh, that uh, this uh, will be able to prevent the flash cells uh, to be actually programmed. Yeah, but uh, it is not the case because of all uh, zero, uh, no, all ones actually, sorry about that. And all one data uh, actually in practice must be randomized to be programmed to an end of flash memory as we discussed. So in this area, so some dummy random data uh, has been already programmed uh, when the data A, data block A is programmed in this page. So in conclusion, yeah, uh, be because of our uh, USB for write property, we can use this uh, uh, free pages. So it looks like free, free space. And the, on, another problem is that um, it is usually infeasible to program pages in an arbitrary order within the block. So meaning that, so first we program a uh, page two over a block and page one over a block uh, in this order. So we cannot do uh, programming in an arbitrary order within a block since reprogramming a page would affect the reliability of data written to its adjacent pages. Okay, so in this example, the unusual space in physical pages zero and one can no longer be used for future writes. So small writes cause a significant waste uh, of program and erase cycles, which in turn degrades the performance and also lifetime of the SSD by introducing more frequent garbage collections. Okay, let's see how the FTL finishes the write request to, to logical block five. So uh, not five, six, seven, right? And since the mapping table only stores a single physical page address per logical page address, the FTL must store data, data blocks A and D in the same physical page. And to this end, the, the FTL first reads uh, the previously written page from the NAND place chip to the internal data, for example, and modifies uh, the buffered page with the data to write meaning data D, and then uh, programs a new page using a new free page, page two in this example, which is called a read modified write operation. And as you can expect, and as you can see, this read modified write operation causes not only waste of program and erase cycles and an additional read operation, which is significantly degrades SSD performance and lack so now let's think about a possible solution uh, for this problem, which is in fact widely used in modern SSDs to, uh, to my knowledge. So the key idea is to write a page only when there are sufficient data blocks to fill the entire page with uh, and use uh, the fine grained mapping and page buffers. Okay, here the mapping granularity is now four kilobytes, meaning that both a logical page address and a physical page address specifies a four kilobyte data chunk. And let's consider the same example, uh, same example requests uh, used in previous slides. Okay. So now the logical block address directly represents a logical page address, so no translation is needed, right? And the FT buffers the data A using a page buffer uh, in the internal DRAM, uh, typically and updates the corresponding mapping. And in this example, we assume that the FTL somehow already knows the physical page address that is going to be used. But this mapping update can also be done after writing the buffer data. But anyways, the important thing is that the FTL needs to know somehow, keep track of, uh, needs to somehow keep track of where the buffer data is currently stored in order to service a read request to the buffer data um, before uh, the buffer data is actually written to the NAND flash memory. Okay, for the next request, uh, similarly with the previous request, uh, the FTL just buffers uh, the requested data blocks and updates uh, the mapping, right? No write to the NAND flash chip has not been uh, yet performed. Uh, and for the last request in this example, after buffering uh, data block B, D, and updated its mapping. Uh, 
the FTM finally uh, writes and uh, meaning flushes the buffer data at once uh, to the same physical page, the single physical page. And compared to the naive page level mapping we just reviewed, uh, fine grained mapping significantly reduces the number of NAND flash operations necessary to handle small writes, thereby improving both of the performance and lifetime of SSDs. So fine grained mapping is highly effective. Uh, there, uh, but as you know, there is no free lunch, right? So the first drawback is uh, the increase in the mapping table size. So compared to 16 kilobyte page mapping, four kilobyte fine grained mapping introduces <coughs> introduces a four times larger uh, memory overhead, requiring uh, DRAM whose capacity is around the one percent of the entire SSD capacity. And considering that modern SSDs provide several terabytes of capacity, several gigabytes of DRAM is needed for fine grained mapping with a 4 kilobyte granularity, which in turn directly increases the SSD price and power energy consumption, right? And the second issue is about the durability of written data. I mean, that a storage device should be able to guarantee uh, the data durability once the uh, meaning that uh, once the data is uh, successfully stored, its effect is permanent uh, without any change over the stored data. And in storage system, data durability is one of the most important requirements that must not be compromised at all, as no one wants a loss uh, or corruption of storage data, right? And as the page buffer is usually implemented by using volatile memory such as SM or DRAM, meaning that the buffer would lose its uh, uh, stored data once the system power is up. And so when a, pow a sudden power off occurs, the buffer data can be lost if there is no proper measure, right? So to ensure data durability, manufacturers deploy large power capacitors, super capacitors that can supply sufficient power for the SSD to flush all the buffer data to NAND flash chips uh, in sudden power off, right? But however, um, as you can expect, doing so inevitably significantly increases the SS price as well, right? So the conclusion here is that even though the drawbacks of a fine-grained mapping is not trivial, it is widely used in modern SSDs as its benefits significantly outweigh the cost. So for accurate SSD simulation, we must consider this as a baseline, I believe. Uh, unless the targeting of very highly resource constrained systems like mobile system, because uh, it significantly affects both the performance and lifetime of the SSD. And one more thing I would like to emphasize is that uh, although many prior works have proposed indeed various mapping techniques to mitigate its memory and space overhead, meaning that this is a very traditional, very classical problems in NAND flash memory, but the but the problem is that this problem is not yet solved. So considering that uh, the SSD capacity has continuously increased and is expected to increase the, to meet the uh, high capacity requirements in this big data error, it is still important to, do, to develop an efficient mapping scheme to reduce the memory overhead while providing high performance. Okay, so any questions so far? Uh, yes, maybe maybe a short question. Mm -hmm. Could you go back one yes. slide? Because I'm I'm not yet 100 sure with the fine grained mapping. Uh -huh. uh, how exactly is it now, now managed if we write to different addresses? Like now we have A, B, C, C, and D, which are in the page bu page buffer. Um, uh -huh. How exactly does it now work with the logical and the physical page address? Because before you said that basically the the page offset is is not saved. Yeah, so yeah, in this case, we do not uh, have to, uh, we, not, we do not have to keep track of a page offset, right? Because the size of a logical page and logical block, I mean here, and the physical the mapping granularity is the same, right? Meaning that, so here, uh, logical block address uh, uh, seven, for, for example, right? We use its uh, two LSBs to specify the four kilobyte offset because the mapping grain length is 16 kilobyte, meaning that four times larger. So we use the two uh, LSV bits to specify the uh, four kilobyte offset within the page, 16 kilobyte page, right? 
Does it make sense? Is it, is it still unclear? Okay, so basically we don't have a page offset because now we have an address for every single block we're writing to and we save the whole exactly. address. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Then, then it makes sense. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And that, that is the principles, uh, that is the prin core principle how this mapping is working. And this kind of mapping translation, I would say, is typically used in file systems also because the basic sector uh, size is actually still uh, five or 12 bytes uh, because uh, the file system is designed uh, called a sector i mean so the file system typical file system is designed for hard disk drives whose uh, the minimum unit of uh, io is uh, a sector five or 12 bytes makes sense yes makes sense thanks okay a lot. thanks thanks thank you for the question and okay so if we do not have any further question Oh, wait a minute. So I don't think uh, the YouTube is working. Oh, no, I think it is working. So it's my iPad problem probably. Okay, let's move on to the second topic. Uh, Multiplane operation aware management, log management, I would say. So we call the multiplane operation that we discussed the last meeting. So in modern NAND flash memory, a die contains a die contains multiple planes here uh, they can operate in parallel because the cells uh, are separated uh, but only when the operations uh, only for uh, only when the target operations target the pages at the same offset within the plane uh, because uh, the planes in the same die share the word line decoder so even though uh, it is somehow possible uh, the mm, every plane in the same die can operate independently if we have a proper uh, peripheral designs. For example, we can write the, uh, this word line for page zero and this word line uh, page one and or this uh, word line page two. But because they uh, share the word line decoder, so we can only uh, do apart from the oper uh, operation on the same word line offset across the different planes. We already discussed this. I hope it is clear. Okay, so to take full advantage of this uh, multi-plane operations, the FTL needs to place the data properly. So the first thing I must mention is that while the read pattern is somewhat difficult to accurately predict, except for large sequential reads, uh, the FTL ha uh, has a freedom to choose the physical pages for handling host write requests, right? because a read request is decided by the workload itself. Uh, but the FTL has a full freedom to choose, not full, but some very high level freedom uh, to choose the physical pages because it manages the underlying NAND flash memory. So for these reasons, uh, multiple multiplane operations are more frequently used uh, for writes uh, than reads. And to perform as many multiple, uh, as many multiple writes as possible, the FTL buffers uh, as many uh, pages as, as the number of planes per die and flushes them one, uh, at once. And this has slightly increased the latency per operation at device level due to the transfer of large, larger data, but significantly increased the right bandwidth right, by using uh, the parallelism. And as you may have already noticed, to sustain multiplane programs, the FK needs to keep the right points of, of all planes in a die uh, to be the same, right? And doing so requires the FK perform data placement uh, in a super block based manner, meaning that the FK treats a set of blocks in different planes as a larger logical block, uh, which introduces on other issues related to garbage collection. So recall garbage collection we discussed the last meeting. So to reduce the number of copy operation, it is a reasonable choice for the FTL to select the uh, victim block with the largest number of invalid pages, right? For garbage collection, which is called a greedy policy. So when the SSD is running out of three pages, uh, the FTL first checks uh, the number of invalid pages in full blocks uh, by referring to the, flash, uh, the status table that keeps track of 
each page's status in a block and select the block with the largest number of invalid pages to minimize the copy overhead, right? Uh, which is a block two, which is a block two in this example as the victim uh, block of garbage collection. Then the FK copies all the valid pages in the victim block to free pages and invalidates uh, the copied pages in the victim block. So now block M minus one here uh, would be the active right block or right point of the plane. And the victim block of block two would be would likely be used as the next uh, active block, right? Let's consider garbage collection. This, uh, the garbage collection uh, method uh, in the same way, operating in the same way uh, for multiplane and flash memory. So since the updated patterns are different across planes in many cases, uh, the block with the largest number of invalid pages would also uh, likely vary across the planes. So in this figure, for example, block two has the largest number of invalid pages within plane zero, while block one is such a block in plane one, right? <coughs> Sorry about that. And suppose that the FTL applies the greedy policy at the plane level, meaning that it selects different blobs uh, as the victim blobs of garbage collection uh, that have largest number of uh, invalid pages. Okay, that, uh, then the FTL would first read a valid page from each block and by performing two single plane, uh, single plane reads and can perform multi-plane writes actually to copy the pages to new block as uh, the page offset of the free block uh, are, is the same in this example, right? And if the FTL keeps the data within the same plane, and the FTL needs to perform two single plane reads and two single plane writes to copy the remaining two pages of uh, block, block five in plane zero, right? So ideally four page copy can be done with just the two multiplane reads and two multiplane writes, uh, but in this example, the FK performs four single plane reads, one multi plane writes, and two single plane writes. So, in fact, this is not the worst thing, uh, as now the SSC cannot perform multi plane writes unless it somehow first uses or discards the second and third pages. Uh, I mean, here, uh, pages in block n minus one in plane one, because now the offset. Uh, for the next three pages different in plane zero and plane one, right? And then we, we do not uh, discard somehow or spans uh, this, uh, this pages two and uh, one and two in plane one, there is no chance to perform multiple plane writes after using block n minus one also. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 so. And the more serious problem is here because the next right point would be this plus, uh, block two uh, and block one, right? Block two in plane one and block one, uh, block one in plane one, right? So after consuming all of these, right? The next right point uh, is here. Right? And there is no chance to perform multiplane operation actually after using uh, these blocks. Is blocks because uh, the page offset is totally different. The block offset is different, right? And this suggests that the FTL should select the victim blocks with the same index to sustain multiplane write operation. Okay, so to address such problems, an FTL can adopt a super block based manual management that groups each block with the same block index, meaning each block at the same vertical position in different planes of a die in this example. So under the superblock based management in this example, the FTL will select the superblock one uh, as the victim block for garbage collection as the two blocks with the block in this one have the largest number of invalid pages across the plane, uh, within the planes, right? And now the FTL first reads all the valid pages of two blocks, uh, which can be done with five single plane uh, reads and one multiplane reads, and writes uh, uh, the six of uh, read, read pages to three pages in the current active blocks by performing three multiplane writes. 
And the FTL can keep the last read page uh, buffered uh, to write uh, to write it later to NAND flash memory with the feature writes uh, by multiplane operation. So the FTL can perform as many uh, multiplane writes as possible. Make sense? Okay, this multiplane array of block management uh, enables uh, the FTL to keep performing multiplane writes thereby significantly improving SSD performance. However, in many cases, it can also increase the overhead of a cop uh, copy overhead of a garbage collection, as the FTL is likely unable to choose a block with the largest number of inbuilt pages in each plane, which in turn increases the number of read write operations required for copying the pages. And in this example, the FTL with the super bullet based management performed the five single plane reads, one multiplane reads, and three multiplane writes, while garbage collection uh, can be okay. uh, can be done with the four single plane reads and two multiplane writes if the FTL choose block two in plane one and block seven in plane one, uh, plane zero and so, so if the FTL chose uh, block two in uh, block two, yeah, in plane zero and block seven, block seven, no, uh, this. So this this is highest and block one actually in plane and one as the victim block, right? Okay, so in fact, it is somewhat hard to say which level would be the most effective for multiplane array of block management, as it has not been yet thoroughly investigated in the literature, uh, to my knowledge. And to be specific, we can also keep uh, the page offset to be the same across all the dice and planes, which would not only make rail leveling and IO scheduling much easier, but also metadata overhead of block management, right? However, it may significantly increase the garbage collection overheads by selecting blocks with a larger no, large number of valid pages for some planes or dice, as we discussed. So in conclusion, multiple operations can significantly improve SS performance, but also requires a proper management at the FTL level. And in the current version of NQCM, and then the flash model already supports multiple operations, but if you run simulation, you would see the FTL performs almost no multiplane operations due to lack of a proper block management. So since the multiplane um, operations significantly affects SS performance, I believe it should be properly implemented for ORCID simulation. Okay, so this is all uh, that I prepared for today's lecture. So do you have any question? Okay, so as I notice, uh, yeah, maybe maybe still, an, an, can I still okay, ask one, sure. one, one short question about uh, the last sure, slide with the, multi, with the multiple dies? Uh, is it also with multiple? Yes, exactly this one. With multiple dies, right. is, it, is it also necessary? Uh, like, I, I understand the level in a, if you have two planes in the same die, then it makes sense mm -hmm. to use multiple. Uh, uh, the, the multi the super bowler, right? Super below within, uh, yeah, between yes. the planes in the same die, but it is somewhat unreasonable. It looks unreasonable to uh, to make all the uh, all the page offset uh, to be the same across all the dice, right? Because there is no constraints, right? Exactly. And is there a benefit? Like I see it with different planes that you basically have a buffer overall and you have a single word line. Multiple mm -hmm. dice also share the same word line, or does every die has a single word? No, no, no. Yeah, it's a very good question, actually. Thank you. Yeah. So there is no constraint uh, within dice. So between dice. So for example, we can uh, perform multiple operation for blocks two in die zero, while we are concurrently performing multiple operation for blocks zero in die one, for sure, because they do not share the paper circuits, right? Okay. So yeah, but but uh, this uh, superbola approach, as I said. Um, you can also uh, make the the this uh, uh, internal tasks, garbage collection or reliable tasks, much simpler, right? Because we only take care uh, we can we can take care of only one blast per uh, the across the dice. So it can also reduce the meta 
metadata management because we need to keep uh, the active blocks uh, index for each dice, right? Yeah, makes if sense. We, if we manage the super block uh, separately between different dice, among different dice. So yeah, so there are, there are pros and cons actually. Yeah, and so, and SSD manufacturer do not uh, disclose, uh, do not want to disclose this kind of implementation at all. So uh, we cannot say, we cannot, it is not so easy to uh, someone, uh, for someone to say that, okay, so this is currently implemented in commodity SSDs. So then I believe uh, one of the important role in academia is to uh, somewhat quantitatively or system and systemically explore the design space uh, pros and cons over different approaches, right? Okay, very good question, thanks. Makes sense, thanks a lot. Thanks. <clears throat> and as a, uh, wait a moment, let me check if there is another question. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, so um, as I noticed, we will not have a background lectures for a while, meaning that this is the last background lecture in this semester at this moment. Uh, let's say uh, at least uh, until May, but uh, we are planning to cover more topics related to, uh, sorry, until June, I would say, but we are planning to cover more topics related to Nendoplash memories of reliability and some recent strategy research of a software research group. Uh, so play, please stay tuned. Okay, so uh, have a nice weekend and uh, hopefully see you next meetings. Let me stop, uh, share my screen and stop recording.